All right, all right, all right. Well, <clears throat> it's a late night tonight, guys. But uh, guess what? We finished the uh, old Hobo Hotel. We didn't finish it. I still got to do the interior work. I got to put some Velcro up and do some other things and such. Um, but we are, uh, hey, look at this. I got on a shirt like this. I got on no pants right now. This is the first time I've camped with no pants in a long ass time, okay? No pants. Uh, dude, I'm in my sleeping bag, dude, in my skivvies and stuff. And uh, I'm loving every single minute of it, man. I got, look, I got snizzy corn. I got snizzy corn to get me through the night. It's gonna get grease everywhere and stuff, butter everywhere, but I got snizzy corn. So, big shout out to Snizzy tonight for, uh, you know, helping me knock this out. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, of course you're thinking, oh my God, it's a blue room, right? But what we're gonna do is, is we're going to a uh, combination of gray uh, in here. It may either just get duct taped to the whole thing because I got a whole bunch of duct tape, uh, but it's gonna be a combination of gray walls and black trim. So we're gonna keep it contemporary in here and we're gonna, you know, so it'll be gray walls, black trim. Uh, heck yeah, dude, hey, check this out. Okay, so the only thing is, is that uh, over here, Tanner Nail, we haven't heard from you in a long ass time, how are you doing? Is uh, that uh, I couldn't, with, in my unit over here, my storage unit, I couldn't uh, actually, it was just long enough to where I couldn't flip my end down, but I'm way warm enough, dude. Like, I mean, it actually started on my way over here tonight, uh, started sleeting. So it, it's it's a really cold night. I mean, it's uh, it's been rainy all day and it started sleeting. So, you know, it's a pretty damn cold night, but look at me. I'm feeling great, dude. So, uh, things I got to do to it still. Let's see if we can flip it around and show you guys the other side. Okay. So you can see down there, that's where I couldn't, I have a door that's, uh, see, th that's actually not the entrance way. It can be an entrance way, but that's where I just like kick off boots and stuff, you know, and put my shoes at and things like that. So there's two feet at the end. This thing's eight feet long. Okay. Uh, so there's a flap up on top that uh, I couldn't put down, of course, because the door's there. I'm okay with that. It'll just be a little bit of noise coming through there, things like that. Uh, but <clears throat> the, uh, so this design here, this side here actually opens up. Uh, so that's kind of like an awning type of deal. This is going to be the door that actually goes down right here to get into. Um, and everything will have weatherproofing flaps like you can see like right here. Okay. Uh, there's nothing, but we're going to have duct tape going over the, the edges to weatherproof the edges. And uh, then the Velcro will be inside the weatherproofing and it'll strap over the corners. So all the edges and corners and sides will be sealed up. Um, we got about the perfect amount of foam board with the slightest amount of waste. It looks like our numbers actually worked out pretty good as far as uh, to make cuts. So um, this will actually fold, that, that one right there will actually fold down forward or fold back this way if I want like a table space inside that's covered from uh, outside, you know, so it'll fold down and uh, then, you know, of course, fold backwards if I want to say just cook outside and just, you know, so I can just sit up right here like this, push this sucker down and then uh, I cook inside right there. So uh, it's coming together, guys. Um, there's just a little bit of uh, basically finish work to do tomorrow. And then uh, everything's all good. Good to see California Mother Load. Uh, Annie Stacy, always a pleasure. Rural Rules, good to see you. My man, Mac and Cheese, baby. What's up, dude? Dude, hey, we're building something great. Hey, this thing actually folds all the way down, dude. Uh, you guys wait till the video, dude. Snizzy and I got mad uh, time lapse video plus. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we got time lapse video plus all kinds of other footage in between show what we're doing so I mean I'm I'm warm as hell right now I'm, I'm actually the warmest that I have been uh, in probably a long long time I mean well I can tell you this this is the first thing here let me show you just to prove it to you okay all right what's up snizzy everybody give snizzy a big shout out dude but I mean did hey Joanne doc, let's see digger ducks my storage unit well, apparently you didn't do a very good job and shit because I still be chilling and shit. 
still be doing what I want. I guess over over here, I still ain't nobody talking about nothing. But uh, that's all right. You know, people gotta hate. Haters gotta hate. Uh, but I'm all right. So apparently they got the wrong place because I'm still here. <laughs> and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <clears throat> So we got a little bit of finish work, but we did all the cuts. Everything worked fine. And this actually folds down into under a foot thick. Okay. So it folds down into uh, what it looks like. I haven't done the exact measurement on it yet. Cause I got to add some things to the outside, but it folds up to, uh, let me get this where I can just get you guys back on me. Okay. All right. So, uh, this thing actually folds down to where it's two and a half feet wide, okay, by four feet long and less than uh, probably 10 inches thick. Seems like it weighs probably about 25 pounds, okay. Um, so <clears throat> it can easily fit in uh, the back of a truck. Uh, well, back of a uh, trunk. It can go in a trunk. It can go in um, a, uh, you know, a, um, uh, you know, a truck, or I could actually carry it and put it on the bus and all that kind of stuff. So this sucker does fold down. Um, and uh, like I said, dude, I'm warm as a motherfucker. So it was a good day. Um, had a good dinner over at Snizzy's. Snizzy fam hooked me up tonight, man. They made some badass stuff tonight, dude. And it was darn good, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> Speaking of which, the Snizzy corn. And in case some of you guys are wondering exactly how to make the Snizzy corn and shit, I got uh, a video that we're going to put out of uh, making the Snizzy corn. So you get to see step by step. I'm, I'm going to have to blow up his secret online. Dude, at least mash the thumbs up. At least mash the thumbs up for uh, Snazzy Corn. What's up, Deborah? Good to see you, my girl. Uh, so we're just checking out the new Hobo Hotel. This is it. This is uh, actually the blue board was the best board that was told uh, by what we needed to do. Now imagine, I know you're looking back here and you might see this right here. It's because I, oh no. I didn't, damn it. I didn't drop my light. Hold on, hold up. Uh, gotta go pop out here. Grab my light. Okay, in case you don't believe me about how warm I am, here's from Mr. T oh God, you saw my socks, dude. You just, I know you're probably wondering right now what those suck smell like, huh? You don't want to know. Dude, but I'm a muskivies, dude. Hey, check out, check out this, uh, check out these legs right here, baby. I'm over here twinkle towing it. I don't get to do that that often. Uh, I've been sleeping in two layers of clothes. I've been sleeping in a combination of uh, of sweatpants and, and, and jeans <clears throat> and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm balling right now, dude, and I'm feeling good about it. So let's put our light back up. Dragonetic, good to see you. Uh... Somebody say that, uh, somebody say Kathy's here. I didn't see you there, Kathy, but if you are, it's good to see you, girl. I don't know where you're at, but. Uh, so. 
first night in the Hobo Hotel. And as I said, we're sleeping pants off tonight, baby. Ain't a carefree worry in the world right now. We're just chilling. We're warm. We're doing good. And uh, we didn't find a place today. <clears throat> but uh, it was pretty shitty weather. Uh, what kind of construction weather? Or what kind of construction is it? This whole thing right now, as you see, it is nothing but foam board and duct tape. <laughs> yeah, I know, huh? <clears throat> foam board and duct tape. Well, they must just assume that she was here. Everybody's just saying hi, like she might be here. But it might be past her bedtime. You know, she's an hour past us. So uh, it could be past her bedtime. So what we've got is a combination of uh, duct tape. We sealed all the edges of this foam board, did every single edge of the foam board with duct tape. And on the outside, it's duct tape hinges, okay? So we've got little, you know, pieces of duct tape on the outside uh, to where, you know, it creates a little hinge effect. And uh, we uh, are going to have to, the things that we got to add is uh, <clears throat> we have to, uh, we got to do the interior. What? Where am I right now? Dragon Head, what do you mean, where am I at right now? I'm fucking uh, storage unit camping. So, oh, if you didn't know that, uh, so I got a storage unit and uh, camping out in that sucker. And uh, I'm loving it because it's uh, it's nice and insulated and it's good. It's, it's nice and cozy. And uh, shoot, I can't complain, dude. I'm shitting in tall cotton right now. <laughs> So, um, so we're going to finish this inside out so it won't be blue, okay? Because I actually want it to look kind of nice inside. Uh, so I'll probably use uh, hang some picks and maybe knickknacks to make it homey. Oh, there is. We're going to actually put some shelves in here. Oh, I'm warm, dude. Look at me. Dragonetta, did you see my legs? That's the first time anybody's seen my legs. That's the first time I've seen my legs sleep in, in over a long time, you know? camping so uh that that's serious that means yeah hell yeah i'm warm and uh remember what did uh somebody say what what, what, what did uh, uh uh tyler say tyler said uh what does snizzy smell like and shit it's like fucking uh like cinnamon and warm cinnamon and hugs or something like that and <laughs> That's what I'm feeling like right now, eating this popcorn. Like it's just like, like movie popcorn, butter, and warm hugs. Like I'm still, like he said, helped me out all day today. Then fucking, he came and got me this morning. Came, helped me out and shit. Fed me, brought me back to my little place and stuff. Got this set up, and it's like I still feel the hug, dude. He he sent it with me with the popcorn. Dragonetta, don't forget the warm part. It's like cocoa with rumple mints in it. Okay, cocoa with rumple mints on a cold winter morn. Thanks, Robin. Um, we're doing good. We're the warmest we've been in a long time. And, uh, So, <clears throat> big shout out to Mr. Sniz and Miss Sniz because uh, they um, sent with me a whole bunch of food, the really good shit we ate tonight. It was basically like a homemade hamburger helper, like they made it themselves and stuff. And so like a home, you know, basically a homemade hamburger helper with a like cheeseburger type of deal, right? Totally bomb. I tell you what. Dude, when she finished cooking that mess and told us to come in and stuff, and that mess was cooking, I was like, dude, that's not a smell I get to smell too often. Home-cooked food. I mean, literally, maybe passing by a restaurant or something, you might get that mess. You know, that little smell, a little whiff. Maybe passing by a Burger King and smell it. You know, smell the charbroil and shit. But, you know, that's as close as I get to that kind of shit. And, uh, in a, in a while. And, uh. Tell you what, man, that mess was bomb. So she actually made Miss Sniz made an entire extra casserole to give to Kara so that they could eat. And, uh, you know, and she's dealing with having a hard time cooking and all that kind of stuff. 
So I made an extra meal. I brought that back. It's in here. It's basically like a refrigerator out there, but not in here. And uh, there's no way I could sit outside this. This is R3 value, okay? R3 value, half inch, uh, whatever you call it. Now, <clears throat> this mess here being this close together, like I'm already, like, I mean, I have zero cold, you know, and it's sleety outside, you know, it's a cold night tonight. So I got zero cold going on. It's all good, but. Uh, so tomorrow morning, I got to get up early and, uh, I'm going to take that over there and, uh, I got to go meet, uh, Kara, uh, outside in front of the house because I can't go in, but, uh, I can go in front of the house. Um, you know, I probably could get into the railroad and stuff because, uh, you know, that was actually my two options. I don't want to get off task here because I want to tell you about what's happening. Uh, but I'll finish first, actually. So tomorrow morning, I got to set my alarm, get up early, go stand outside, wait until they start getting ready to go. And then I'm going to try and get them to the bus stop or just make sure or at least be there. You know, I don't know if it's going to be too cold for them to walk a block and a half to go to the bus. Um, but, you know, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, Kara has to get up, um, you know, early and get out of the house and stuff, which is a shame because there's actually somebody else there at the house that could do that. Uh, but they don't do that. And uh, so, you know, I feel really bad for her that she has to get up that kind of early and drive the kids to uh, the bus stop, you know, and it and it sucks. So I'm going to. Uh, so I've not been compromised, Robin Banks. Robin Banks, how many times did I tell you, dude? They said I wouldn't cross the border in Mexico. They said I wouldn't do this. They said I wouldn't go to Alaska. They said I wouldn't fucking the piece of shit wouldn't make it out of fucking California. They done said all that kind of stuff and shit. But guess what? I still do what I want, when I want, how I want. It's the basic it is, dude. So call it what you will. Call it, uh, call it, uh, you know, uh, biofeedback. Call it the world, uh, you know, giving me a break. Call it whatever you want. But uh, dumb, stupid motherfuckers, dude, that hate and shit. They just got their little hearts filled with hate. They ain't fucking bothering me and shit. I'm sitting right here, dude. Now about a rock, we ain't smoking down, dude. Um, <clears throat> I got too many eyes on me and things that are happening here. You know, I got a, I got a custody battle and unfortunately I've been stoner my whole life and shit, but, uh, you know, that's one of them things that, uh, uh, you know, um, you got to play the game. So you got to play the game. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, it's Texas and Texas is in a legal state. If I was in, Alaska or California and shit, I would probably smoke all I wanted to and stuff and, you know, not really care about it. And, uh, but, uh, you know, because it wouldn't affect me like that. But here in Texas, smoking can affect uh, whether or not you're going to be with the kids or not. So, you know, we're going to play the game. And that's a big deal for me. I mean, I've been smoking for a long time and shit. That's a big motherfucking deal. So, uh, what was the original question? You know, that's right, mac and cheese. Amen to that, brother. That's why you're on the team. you always seen that, dude. Uh, let's see. No, I'm going to go back and try to answer your question, Ingar Jeeper RV323. And where did you come through, uh, buddy? Because I don't I don't know you. We haven't, first time I've ever seen that name before, dude. Uh, is this just your first time commenting or what's happening? So he said, uh, Zane, you ever put any thought into working for the railroad? It's good money. You're a smart dude. If I can, If I can do it, you can do it. Lots of options there in Texas. Okay, let me tell you how that process went down. Uh, <clears throat> right on, Ayatollah. Um, when I was in Alaska, okay, a long time ago, I was working rat power line work, okay? And that is just what I got involved in, okay? Uh, just through luck of chance, like actually the guy that's offering me a job right now is um, the guy that uh, brought me into the power line trade and uh, got me hired on. And uh, we worked RAT non, non-union, uh, which in Texas is absolutely a waste of time and waste of your life, literally, because 
you're a lot more likely to have uh, serious accidents. So, uh, in a right to work state, <clears throat> and that's proven fact. And um, so, uh, let's see, when we went to Alaska and tried to go back to Alaska to be fishermen, realized that wasn't going to work. Yeah, go frugal. You know we weren't going to fit in the little miniature one, but listen, wait until the story's over and I'll tell you guys again how we're going to finish this sucker out, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> oops, I'm plugged there. Hold on, let me plug back in. So I'll lose you guys. Um, <laughs> hey, who the fuck said that? Who the fuck said that? Dragonetta? Dragonetta said that. Who the fuck said that? Dragonetta? Guess what, motherfucker? That's real fucking shit right there, dude. Because I grew up down here in the game where I've been hustling for money since I was in fucking middle school, okay? I was selling my motherfucking Ritalin and shit to the fucking middle schoolers when I was in fucking fifth grade. I didn't see it at all. I didn't see haters want to hate. I didn't see animosity. I didn't see my own best friends fucking hate me. Because I didn't fucking pay for consequences that they had to pay for. Not that I ever did anything to them, but just the mere fact that I didn't ever have to pay for consequences like they did. Kind of like just like right now. Kind of like just now. Right? I have any consequences? Fuck no, dude. I'm sitting here fucking chilling in my spot. I don't give a fuck. So... You know, it makes people hate and shit. So I'm used to that kind of shit. Like you said, you come up from the hood, dude. When you learn to fucking hustle from a kid and stuff, dude, you are surrounded by nothing but other motherfuckers that are either, one, jealous of your hustle, or two, think they can fucking make something off of it. So who gives a fuck what they're talking about? Now, going back to why uh, uh, the railroad and power line work. Now, when I was in Alaska, I realized uh, it wasn't working out up there. Uh, we had kids. We struggled. That was my dream to work there. I took it upon myself to realize that uh, I needed to get a real job to, you know, to help her, to help the kids, to get all this kind of stuff. And uh, when it came down to it, I actually did my research and my and I did enough research. And my research was the highest paying job, because here's what Kara said. She said, look, I know you want to travel and I know you want to do all this stuff and I know you want to do everything. But here's the thing. If you can have health insurance for the kids and a uh, and start accruing retirement, then you can do whatever you want to after that. Yeah, it didn't quite work out like that. I did try that. You know, I got it all and then got the YouTube. And so, yeah, it didn't quite work out like that. But uh, I don't think she was fully prepared for the fact that, yeah, I was going to do whatever the fuck I wanted after I did that, right? So... Um, what I ended up doing was, was uh, I did my research, looked for what is the most high paced job with the best benefits that you can get with no education and a record. Now I take that back. I added the record part secondly after I realized that those two jobs without an education were the railroad and outside power line work is a power lineman uh, working for IBW. They had the best benefits, the best things. Both of them, one was the railroad and one was there. And what it boiled down to is, is that there's no outside contractors or per se when it comes to the railroad. The railroad is a very politically charged, uh, you know, I mean, when I say politically, I mean like politics, in-house politics, you know, a lot of times you're talking about generational jobs, um, people working in, there's lots of politics when it comes to working in an in-house union, okay? Because an in-house union is a union full of what they call B members. And those B members can be fired and then they don't have union benefits after that, okay? So <clears throat> just because they are a union and get the benefits doesn't mean that they are not subject to politics, okay? Now, I knew right away, dude, uh, that, um, that, uh, I knew right away that I did not fit in with their politics. Okay. That I was not the guy 
to be able to jump through their hoops, suck somebody else's fucking great uncle's tallywhacker just because of the fact that, uh, you know, I, uh, so I'm not trying to diss railroaders at all. It's a badass job. I'm just too fucking rough around the edges to fit in with that. And I know that. Okay. Outside line, because it was such a dangerous job, it came from roots of hiring felons. Okay. The, the roots of power line work was back in the day, the government made prison felons do the work because nobody else would do it because it was too dangerous. You know, you're talking about, uh, you know, the third or fourth most dangerous job, depending on what year it is and, you know, who beats who that year, but the third or fourth most dangerous job in the world. And that's power line work. Okay. And I can attest to that because I've spent years out on the ocean doing the second most dangerous job that's out there and never saw people die like I did working power line work. Okay. So, <clears throat> which I guess I was just lucky in fishing and stuff, right? Uh, because in fishing, you can pick your boat, but in power line work, you can't necessarily pick your crew. And uh, what ends up going down then is, uh, you know, you end up working with some derelicts and shit, and you either got to be that asshole that's like, no, fuck you, you're fucking stupid, dude. I'm over this and shit, dude. Uh, <clears throat> the chat room has its own agenda and shit. It's all right, dude. They always do that. Hey, hey, every time I like, I even give them warning. I used to just go back and check for questions and shit, you know, but like I even give them warning and shit. I'm like, okay, so in about five minutes, somebody formulated a question that has something to do with what we've been talking about. And I'll go ahead and answer it. And I think I've maybe had one out of the last 10 times that I've asked that. So, you know, hey, the chat room's here to chat. We don't give a fuck. Hey, it's just like chatting with the background, right? Uh, Brenda. Hey, Brenda, we're going on about shit that either you give a fuck about or you get the fuck out the room. Nobody cares. <laughs> anyway, so um, <laughs> the uh, so power line work suited my needs, you know, because everybody there has to, uh, you know, risk their life. One, you live a very on the edge, you know, lifestyle. You work in a crew atmosphere with. Um, I've actually seen that name a long time ago. So Brenda Siegel, that was around a long time ago that used to do some trolling. So I'm pretty sure it's one of them weirdo accounts of some weirdo. So we ain't worried about Brenda. Y'all go ahead and go on. And, uh, the, uh, and they suited me, you know, I mean, and the hardest part about that was, is that you had a lot of guys like, you know, they'd always fill you out and stuff and try and be like, uh, <clears throat> You know, they'd go on about, uh, you know, who's cool on a job, who's not. If you don't know what that means, then you don't need to know the answer to that. But who's cool? You cool, man? And, uh, you know, and they try and figure that out so they can get their crews together. I mean, it's it's based on a felon society, you know, and it's nothing but a bunch of raw dog motherfuckers, dude, fucking doing outside line work. Now, if you go to the power company, it's a bunch of fucking no cussing Christian fucking third generation fucking, you know, guys. And it's the same way at the, at the uh, railroad, you know, you get a lot of fucking third generation fucking, you know, holier than thou fucking, you know, I got to play the game just right or I'll have to narc you out, you know, and because we'll lose our job if you don't. And there's no real repercussions because of it. So if I could go back to power line work and stuff, or I mean, back to union work and get all those benefits, I'd go back to outside line work. The only problem with that is, is that, uh, you know, that's a fucking, that's a dedication. That's a lifestyle that's living on the road in a trailer. You know, you're going to make, you know, six figures and make $250,000 a year, you know, um, <clears throat> and uh, all that kind of stuff. But uh, you'd have to have a rent a wife. I can go do that right now, you know. I can go and get into that trade and do that right now. There's nothing barring me from do that, you know. Uh, being a laborer, yeah, there is because I don't have my license and stuff. If I wanted to be a laborer, right, and make 33 bucks an hour with double time, I'd have to be on the road and, uh, you know, be traveling in a trailer with a rent -a wife with my kids and stuff and, um, you know, uh, hoping that she's treating them well. And uh, making good money out there in some different countries or state. And, uh, but, um, I could do that right now just by going to a derelict state 
like say another right to work state where they can't get linemen, like say Florida or something like that. People go to Florida, they go to uh, Louisiana and you basically just spend six months there as a lineman. And then if you're better than all the rest of the derelicts, which guaranteed we are because I've already been better than all of them before, uh, you know, <clears throat> and I'm not saying everybody in that state, it's just that everybody in that state that was actually worth a fuck at making at doing line work would say, why would I make $19 an hour plus time and a half over here when I can go to New York, California, fucking Colorado, fucking Seattle, fucking wherever, and make $50 an hour plus double time, you know? And when I worked in the union, you know, I accrued, which I still have accrued now, I have accrued $7.90 an hour for every hour that I ever worked going towards uh, you know, um, retirement. So I've got well over six figures accrued in a retirement fund, uh, that I can get back. Now, the cool thing about that guys is I'm going to go off on a tangent because we're just rolling with it is that, uh, for IBEW, you have to be out of the trade for three years like you can't even work rat, right? If they find out you're working rat and they will look that up, uh, you have to be out of the trade for three years, okay? Pay your dues, which I didn't pay my dues, but I talked to the union hall and they were like, hey, all you need is a hardship letter. Do you think you can, uh, you know, squirrel lips, oh my fucking God. Uh, right on, Squirrel Lips. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm fucking talking about. So you've been lurking. You're here. I love you, buddy. You're all good, bud. And, uh, and that's a huge deal, dude. We're not talking about a 401k where if you give 1%, we give 1%. No, it's 795 an hour and shit, dude, for every hour you work and stuff, and you ain't got to pay shit. And <clears throat> you don't have to vest in it. Well, technically you do. Okay. Like... <clears throat> No, you actually don't have to vest, okay? Uh, one year and you're out. My man squirrel lives. My man, dude. My man, dude. That's what I'm talking about. And when you get off and you're retired, you better get in a little fucking RV and come over and visit me and shit, because I need to meet you and shit if we haven't already, because I love you, buddy. <clears throat> Electric co-ops will actually pay pretty good, but they're non-union. And so here's the thing. I'm going to go ahead and finish my thought, Okay. Right on, squirrel. 56, baby. Is uh, that <clears throat> if... So anyway, so she said, do you think you can qualify for a hardship? Well, I already knew I could, right? And so I was like, I mean, if anybody could qualify for a hardship when it comes to that, of course I can. So I told her, I said, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you know, here's the deal and stuff. And she's like, I oh, don't worry about it. Just send in a fucking deal. It's a done deal, right? So basically... I have to be out of the trade for three years. Then I can get that retirement back. Do you understand? I don't even have to wait till 65. They are that badass about it. That we have put it in a fund. That fund made money. They don't make me have to wait till I'm old. If I am out of the trade for, it used to be for six years and they changed this. If you're out of the trade for three years, but pay your dues through all three years of that, then you can have that retirement. So we're going to work on that, okay? Because it's well over six figures. I need it probably right now, and I'm going to need it, but we are still five to six months away from that. I can't guarantee that I will ever actually get that. I pretty much hope that I will. I've got a good enough sob story and fucking, uh, you know, hardship story to get it. So why the fuck not? Um... <clears throat> I'll tell you even a bigger sob story, though. The bigger sob story that I'm dealing with right now is I got 39 motherfucking likes, 72 people in here. So I got a whole bunch of fucking lurkers. And I'll tell you what, unless you don't have a fucking Google account and you're not allowed to fucking comment, then I'm going to tell you fucking right now, dude, you've got a fucking gay fetish for me and you're watching my fucking ass all the time because you want to fuck me so fucking bad, dude. But yet, I'm not going to let you say so you just sit there and fucking watch me and won't mash that thumbs up because you're too scared to let me know that I fucking, that you're in love with me. And if you're not, then you're just enjoying the content. So just go ahead and enjoy the content. Uh, so <clears throat> that's an option on the table. 
And that's a real deal option on the table that I just verified with them when I went there. Okay. So I verified that with them and said, hey, look, if, you know, we're going to do that. You know, what, what are my options here? I'm just going to lay it out. I got some issues and shit, right? And uh, they told me this is what you got to do and stuff, you know, and it's going to work. You know, we got your back. We'll fucking leave and sign for you and shit, you know, and let you know that everything's cool. You got nothing but a good record with us, you know, so you're all good. So it comes down to facing the reality one that unless I get a rent a wife and everything else and shit, dude, uh, you don't even see the thumbs up when it's like, <laughs> you goofy bastard. You ain't got to make excuses to alert. Fine. You want to alert? You want to alert? You want to touch fucking pants? Let's go ahead and touch them. I don't even have pants on. This is for all you lurkers out there. Uh oh. Bounce to bow wow. Oh, that's hey. Come on, Matt. Now you can have a reason to mash on it. You're like, well, thank God. That's all I wanted him to do is just show me a little pants, dude. Okay, so mash on it for the lurkers, guys. Uh, that, uh, that's the best option, because unless I get a rent a wife, want to have kids in a trailer out in the middle of nowhere, you know, and just fucking constantly on the road, not being able to go to the same school and shit, then yeah, let's go out there and make a fucking quarter million dollars a year. Sure, let's do it. Otherwise, I'll take a little bit less than that and shit right now, you know? And uh, let's just hope that it works out that way. I put in my time. I've got more than one hardship. I've got more than one hardship. I've got. I've actually got a legitimate excuse for leaving the trade, and that is the fact that my fucking uh, not protege, but my uh, what do you call him? The opposite of protege. My uh, mentor fried the fuck up on top of us and fucking melted on us. You know, and I was the only person out of that. Uh, entire fucking crew out of all those people I'm the only person out of every single person on that crew that put my fucking motherfucking hands on another fucking hot wire after that did I have a breakdown after that yeah I had a breakdown did I have fucking uh, anxiety after that yeah I had anxiety and shit but god damn it if I didn't put my fucking hands on that shit sweating my fucking ass off expecting my death any fucking minute and shit for another fucking year and a half almost after that shit happened how big is your goober and taters, dude? That's the fucking weirdest thing ever, dude. You guys are so fucking weird and shit. Because it always starts out with something like that, dude. It always starts out with how big is your goobers. Like, like you guys don't think that we know the fucking routine and shit. It starts out with something like that. You're like, oh, I got a couple comments out. Nobody's noticed that I'm a dumb shit and shit. And I'm a dumb shit fucking troll. And then uh, and I'll get a couple. It's always the same routine. Even in the comment section. Otherwise, like in the regular. It's like, hey, I'll put out a couple of comments on the slide. Boom. And now I'll fucking hit them at 5 o'clock in the morning and shit. Like, we don't know that shit. Come on. New routine, guys. It's old. It's like, like I said, guess where I'm at. Guess where I'm at right now. Because I don't give a fuck. Anyway, so back to what we were talking about. So, uh, hey, the piece of shit made it to Alaska. <laughs> no. I made it to Alaska. Went right past the border. It all says at least I got a house. <laughs> but see, here's the funny thing.
Sure, because you stayed a slave to the game and did it forever and shit and made sure that you did and stuff. But guess what? I didn't face the dark side, been to the dark side, been fucking... I've had more shit happen in the last fucking two years of my life than you'll see in the entire fucking entirety of your fucking life. I've seen more adventure in the last fucking two years and more crazy shit than you will see in the entire fucking entirety of your fucking life. In your fucking life. And guess what? Give me about two, three weeks and I'll have a house too. I'll tell you what, let me tell you a story. I'm going to tell you guys a story. And this actually equates to everything. I actually just told my buddy's uh, wife this tonight. And my buddy's wife, uh, you know, was asking me about some of the shit that's been happening and all the stuff that's been going on. And uh, we started talking about best friends. And uh, I have one best friend. Yeah, story time with Zane, Squirrel Lips. You ready for this? Is uh, that, um, well, hey, guess what? Guess what? I'm just a couple fucking months away, four months away from acquiring a fucking, and I'm debt free right now. Let me tell you guys that. I have no preconceived debt. I have no outstanding credit cards that I have to worry about. I have nothing because I did the fucking, before all this happened and shit, we were debt free. And then I didn't acquire any debt after that. I never used any credit cards. I made money and shit, right? Like I created a $2,000 a month income right after I was made homeless in the fucking slab city and shit. Um, because I faked my death. That's the dumbest thing I've ever fucking heard, dude. Faked my death. People, who even says that? That's a fucking joke. Don't even worry about that fucking girl, because you know that's a joke, because obviously I've put it all on fucking line and shit and stuff, and that was dumb. So anyway, and, uh, <clears throat> so the thing was is, I went out there and I did that, uh, out of the slabs, made an income, came back, still got that tome, they still destroyed that shit, still came back and stuff. Now, here's the thing is, that I'd be willing to bet, now I'm not counting on my chickens before they hatch, but let's just say the chicken roost has said, don't worry, you got this, okay? That I'd be willing to bet that being debt free, that by the time I go over there and I finish out another four or five months and I get my fucking retirement back, which is fucking policy and shit, that I will be more in the fucking green, more in the fucking black. than you are right now with your little motherfucking house. And I would actually be willing to bet that that motherfucking uh, amount that I'll be getting that's over six figures may possibly even be worth more than your fucking house, bitch. So shut the fuck up. Ain't nobody trying to hear your shit. You ain't talking about nothing, dude. Ain't talking about fucking nothing and shit. I'm the one sitting here talking. I'm the one sitting here still doing what the fuck it is I said I was going to do yesterday when people said I wouldn't be doing it tomorrow and shit. And I'm still fucking doing it right now because I do whatever the fuck I want to. So. That's all I'm going to say about that. And why did I get that ability to do that? Because what that first person asked... I think it was Ayatollah or Engel or whatever it was. Ah, it does look like a coffin, doesn't it? Is uh, that I did my research a long time ago. What is it that somebody with no education that's fucked up their entire life can make the most possible money that they possibly can? And, uh, I figured it out, made some retirement and shit, worked out my issues with him, you know. I gave my uh, my wife, who is terminally ill, 
way over the ability that she was able to live because of the initial treatment that she was given, the best treatment that she could possibly get from that. Union, bro. Union. That's the fucking bottom line. Union. <laughs> Amen, squirrel lips. That's all you gotta motherfucking say, dude. Union. Amen. And let's just say this. I'm going to say one last thing on my little rant. Did the government steal your info? Zachary, I'll answer that next. I want to say one last thing. Is that I just killed their fucking stream and shit, dude. I dropped in there for a second. We got more people than they had in their fucking stream at fucking 12 o'clock in the fucking morning. Nobody gives a fuck. So... <clears throat> Did the government try and steal my info? I think you're talking about the ID thing. And... The ID thing is uh, the whole Real ID Act. I was uh, almost a victim of the Real ID Act. And uh, that is that uh, you lose all your identifications. You can't get another identification. It is absolutely impossible. I don't give a fuck what you say. I will bet everybody in this fucking room that if you actually go down that rabbit hole and throw away every single fucking ID that you possibly have, dude. Brotherhood of locomotive engineers and trainmen representing, baby. Amen to that, dude. Hey. The bottom line is, is trainmen do have it better than linemen. I'm going to say that. They got it easier. They make just about as much money. Maybe not from overtime and stuff, but they, they make just as much money. And uh, they're the, oh, the railroad is the only person in the fucking government that has superseded us on a job. Because, uh, you know... They're pretty fucking hardcore and shit, dude. And, they, and, you know, when it comes to doing any sort of line work near a railroad, you can't do shit until they show up. Now, as a lineman, you can do shit wherever the fuck you want to. You can tell cops, look, step back 10 feet, dude. I'm about to finish this shit. And they, they listen and shit, right? You can tell fucking anybody in the building. You can tell anybody and shit, step back 10 feet and shit, and I'm going to fucking finish this shit. Just stop talking to me and stuff, right? And uh, they got to listen and shit, you know, so that's that's what comes with non-civil work, right? When you work non-civil, you are basically almost a paid, well, you are essentially, it's not basically almost, you are a paid contractor of the government, okay? So, uh, you know, you are a little bit different class than your average worker, you know, because you can, like, you can literally show up on a job uh, and tell everybody else to leave, and they all got to leave, right? Well, fucking railroad <laughs> is the only people that I've ever seen that's been able to do that to us, <laughs> you know what I mean? And they show up on a job and say, everybody go home, and you're going home and shit, right? Railroad's pretty fucking badass. I just wasn't fucking smooth around the edges enough to work there. You know, if I was, I'd probably work there. But, uh, I'm not the type of guy that I can't make up. How much am I asking for the bracelet? You guys better go on there and fucking, uh, and better bid on that sucker. Uh-oh, <laughs> Robin getting mad. <laughs> Sorry, Robin. But, uh, Right now, the bid is $99 on the bracelet. <laughs> right away, enjoying the circus. I knew a guy that did that, and of course, I thought about it years ago, back before I had kids, but it'd be funny. Uh, the uh, lowest bid on it right now is $99. Of course, it's the Eye of Horus. Uh, hold on, let me pull this part down.
I was trying to make it for a woman. But uh, it's too small for my wrist. So it would be a little bit big for a wrist, for a woman's wrist. But at the same time, it can work as a bangle, you know. You can just flatten it out on the sides, on the edges, and uh, have a little bit of space in there, you know. So. Um. Hold on, let me text, uh. It could be. It could be. Hold on. Let me hit her, hit her back real quick. Uh, Kara just texted me. All right. No, no buffering. Um, okay. No, no buffering. It was just that uh, Kara texted me and asked me if I was still up. And uh, it's kind of late. And uh, so I just want to check and make sure it wasn't an emergency or something like that. And, uh, or, you know, it doesn't have to be an emergency. If she just wants to talk to me right now, I'm going to sit and, you know, get off of you guys and talk to her. Uh, so, <clears throat> but, uh, nope, all she wanted to let me know was that she would like El Pollo Regios tomorrow, that she's craving it. So that'll be one of my big missions tomorrow as we're looking for houses. We'll go and get her some Pollo Regios and bring it to her. You know, it's my pleasure. Uh, of course, uh, it's not always that easy and shit. Of course, I got to fucking... <laughs> I got to uh, walk, take a bus, carry, you know, all the above. And, might I add, I don't mean to piss anybody off or shit in their Cheerios or just pry their mouth open and shit straight down their throat, but I do want to say that not only did we carry more people in here, but at least we can beat the 50-50 ratio of thumbs up, thumbs down. You know you got to be clown shoes and shit when you have to realize that more of the people watching you are thumbs downing you than are thumbs upping you. Like that more of the people there are watching you are just watching you fail. <laughs> I mean, I don't... I mean... Well, hey, if anybody's buffering right now because I changed, go back and refresh your screen and it might not. Um, I don't want to sound crazy and shit, but, uh, you know, people, oh, they're over there doing this and doing that and talking about you and shit. I went over there and I'm like, well, who gives a fuck what the fuck they're saying and shit? Because, you know, each one of them's got five troll accounts of their own and shit. They got 30 thumbs up, fucking 30 down. I'll steal all their fucking views. Who gives a fuck, dude? I don't give a fuck. <clears throat> So, you know, it's funny like that. Sounds like I had a great day. Yes, I had a great day because uh, I accomplished all the goals today that we had planned on accomplishing. Right on, LJ. LJ, you the man, dude. Uh, LJ, I'm going to talk to you privately before I throw you out on blast. Or not on blast, but on, like, pedestal and stuff. Because you're awesome, LJ. I want to thank you for that the other day. I want to thank you so much. And, uh, but LJ, I'm going to show you guys this, okay? Yeah, I couldn't fold down the end because I'm in my little storage unit, right? And, uh, <clears throat> on the end right here. Hey, uh, LJ, though, did you get your, uh, did you get your, uh, uh, tooth? Did you get your uh, Did you get your necklace? Let me Let me know that. I want to know. I want to know if you get your tooth. I was really proud of that silver wrap, and I, I hope uh, hopefully uh, you got it and you like it. I hope I really hope you like it because I, I put in the best I could on that one as far as wraps go. So here's the uh, Hobo Hotel. Now imagine I've got this propped open actually right now for the light and actual air because believe it or not. And our value of three in this small of space is pretty damn warm, okay? Like I said, another leg shot, guys. Touch legs, please. Is uh, This is the first time I have taken off my freaking pants in my sleeping bag in a long, 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 long time.
Okay, so you're still waiting on it. Uh, well, hey, I want you to know, LJ, actually on yours, I paid for insurance. Uh, so I paid for the extra insurance on it uh, up to the value. Um, so just let me know if anything weird's going on or whatever with it, and we'll track that down. I'll go check it tomorrow. So I got this open right here. This is going to be uh, everything. I still got to finish it in. Like I said, we're going to do a combination of gray... Uh, and black trim so basically be like you're seeing right there but instead of blue and all that it's gonna be gray in the middle okay so once we do that um, then it'll be super finished on the inside then on the outside we have to put in uh, the uh, what do you call it uh, we have to uh, put in uh, the camouflage okay because we're gonna put a camouflage layer on the outside so <clears throat> And then, let's see, what else are we going to do? Oh, well, right here, we're going to put uh, flaps, okay? And it's going to be weatherproofing flaps with Velcro. So everything's going to Velcro uh, all, all in. Well, we, we know that Ayatollah because the bottom line is uh, the trolls wouldn't even have a troll channel if it wasn't for me. So, you know. Uh, the only reason that they're even able to have their existence acknowledged out there is though they wish that, uh, you know, it had to, literally the only reason that they have their existence acknowledged is because they have somebody else who is doing better than them to talk about. So, maybe not better than them, because, you know, yeah, sure, hey, I'm in a fucking box out here and shit doing this and stuff, but, you know... Hey, what do they say? Uh, you only hate the things you fear and fear the things you don't understand. Granddaddy told me that, and that made me fucking... I, I never had to worry about anything else, dude. You only hate the things you fear and fear the things you don't understand. That's all that matters, dude. I don't know. You know, we actually miss Charles, dude. Charles was the only classy troll that we ever had. All the rest of them are just a bunch of fucking idiots and stuff, dude. You know. And the funny thing is about all the trolls that we had was that apparently in the beginning, they were only here to expose deadbeats and stuff, right? But yet me coming home to be with my kids and to take care of them only threatens them more. Why? Because the whole idea of a deadbeat is only a moral high ground to be able to try and justify why it is you're doing what you're doing. But the bottom line is, is that, um, you know, they've created an entire house of cards and everything that they're, you know, uh, upon. And the only way that they can have validation and the only way that they can say not look at the last couple of years of their life and go, yeah, I was a complete, absolute piece of fucking dog shit is if I fail. So at this point in time, it doesn't even matter that they, you know, about supporting me actually being with the kids. It matters most about me failing so that they can win. And that's what matters more than anything. And, you know, and I already know that. Like I said, guys, I grew up in a bar, dude. I grew up in a bar. I've been around fucking lunatics since I was fucking 12 years old, hustling them on the pool table, okay, and taking their fucking money. <laughs> I mean, I'm not worried about some fucking loose cannon lunatics and shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, Mezzy. It's okay. Here, here's the thing, Mezzy. I'm going to go ahead and give you the benefit of the doubt. We got a lot of trolls over here. And uh, sometimes if you might do some late night ambient fucking commenting and shit where you might say some stupid shit that you're not quite aware of, but yet you're not a part of the troll organization, we're just going to lump you all up in a bunch of fucking just troll mixture and shit. So be careful with your late night ambient commenting and stuff, and you probably don't need to worry about it. Homework in the back of the bar while playing the jukebox. Girlfriend, Dragonetta, you forgot one thing. Dragonetta, you did forget one thing. And that is, dinner 
was the little fucking thing of fucking, uh, you know, peanuts and Cheetos and all that kind of shit. <laughs> Dude, I used to go in there and my dinner was the fucking Cheetos and fucking, you know, the little munch thing, you know, little munch deals, you know? That was the only other thing I remember of that growing up in a bar, eating too many maraschino cherries and at nighttime just fucking eating two, three fucking containers of those fucking, you know, munchies on the table, the salty shit to make you drink more, yeah. Damn, Mac, you lived over a bar in LA? Chris Crass, I don't know what kind of fucking town you grew up in, but we didn't have no pigs feed at our bar. <laughs> hey. The cherries. Oh, Mac, yeah, I believe he was a bouncer. You bounce some bitches right out the... Boom! Well... You know, Dragonetta, that has always been kind of a funny deal, is the fact that, like with any Slab City video that has been viewed a gazillion times, like I've got a couple out there that have over 100,000 views, you know, that are Slab City videos. And uh, they are a very odd bunch of people that watch Slab City videos, because just like you said, they are interested in that lifestyle, but yet can't live it themselves because they're too, you know, wrapped up in the normal lifestyle or just whatever it is, you know. Uh, some of the trolls, I don't mean to say this about everybody, but some of the trolls, I'm just going to say because they're too pussy. And, uh, but uh, they can't live that lifestyle. And they might say they don't want to and I don't need to and shit, but why do you spend all of your fucking life watching it? Why do you go out and look at it? So these videos they used to have on Slab City and stuff, they, like, I would get 125,000 views. Uh, I would get, uh, you know, maybe if I was lucky, 60% thumbs up, you know, as opposed to thumbs down. So there is a lot of thumbs down coming. You got a lot of motherfuckers like, you guys live like a piece of shit, you bunch of tweakers, stupid motherfuckers. Thumbs down. But yeah, I'm going to watch every video that you fucking make and shit, dude. And I'm never going to miss one. <laughs> and so, you know, yeah, I equate it to, like, when I lived up in Alaska... We had an off-grid community called uh, Hippie Cove. Like I said, the same my first rodeo and shit. Dude, I grew up in the bar and stuff. I didn't seen, I didn't seen the best version of your bigger brother and shit when he was actually a real troll. And that was uh, and wait, wait, hold on. Can I say that again by verifying the fact that? Hold on. I'm still doing what the fuck it is I want to do when I want to. Okay. Anyway. So, is that uh, the whole thing was, is that out at, in Alaska, was uh, we had, I lived in an off-grid community that was right off the road, a mile and a half from town. You could live off-grid. You were backed up to, uh, 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 you know, everybody's squatting there. So, nobody actually paid rent there. Nobody did anything. Everybody was squatting. And town, this is a small town, about 2,500 people. And you had about... A hundred people in town, and they might be the most wealthiest and influential. And, and and ironically, most of those people moved in from out of town, brought money to town. They didn't make their money in town. They didn't get raised in town. They didn't live in town. They didn't do any of that shit. But they brought money to town, and they paid a shit ton to live there. They paid a shit ton to live there because we're talking sixty four cents a kilowatt. Okay, I don't know if you guys know what 64 cents a kilowatt is in your town but that's generally pretty uh, pretty expensive and that was 15 years ago right so <clears throat> but these 100 people out of 2500 people that happen to be some of those influential that paid the most taxes so we have to listen to them and shit they said 
you know what? Screw those people out at the Cove and stuff. They can't live like that. We're not going to do that. And they would sit there and hammer, 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 just like all the other jealous fucks do and sit there, sit there, hammer, hammer. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. I did this and I did that and I did this and I should get this and I should do that. He's a piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of shit. Well, why are you so worried about it then? And the bottom line that I broke down to is it's like, well, why don't you just come out here and be a piece of shit with the rest of us and live fucking... I don't want to do that. That is, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to live off grid. I'm not going to go out there and do that. I don't want to live like that. Well, then shut the fuck up. Okay? Because you don't want to live like that. You're too pussy to live like that. You can't handle to live like that. But you can't stand the fact that another man is fucking man enough to live like that. Because I'll tell you one thing. The difference between the lower 48 and Alaska is that Alaska is 90% man. For one, 90% man. The lower 48, 90% pussy. 90% pussy. And I, I can test that because I could take you, and I'm not meaning all of y'all, I mean, you know, just a couple. You, I could take you up there and you wouldn't make it. Okay? You wouldn't make it. You just wouldn't make it. I can guarantee you that. You could not fucking hike with me, live off grid with me that far. You couldn't do it. You wouldn't make it. Okay? So what happens then is, is you sit back and you get mad and you go, but he's fucking making it and I can't because I'm a pussy and so I'm just going to watch everything that he does, but I can't do it myself. So now I'm going to get mad at what he's doing and stuff and I'm going to tell him he shouldn't do it either. <laughs> Who gives a fuck, dude? That's all we're going to say about that. I think we're done. You are fucking balling it, mac and cheese. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. I feel like I'm balling it actually right now eating my fucking popcorn. You know what the BDF is tonight, Cinemagic? Is I ain't got no pants on, baby. Why? Because I'm in an insulated fucking cabin in the middle of a fucking sleet storm. Because I'm in the Hobo Hotel. And my little fucking moving storage unit. So, for that, for you tonight... I'm not going to touch pants. I'm going to touch leg. It's a special night for you tonight, okay? You got less pants, more leg. And that's a big thing for you, okay? Because I got keeper legs, right? Okay, so I wasn't blessed with skin that tans. I'm Irish, right? So I wasn't blessed with skin that, skin that tans, all right? I just get like a big old red Indian and shit. You know, you get some powder shit and stuff. That's all you get. Now, I know I done kick the hornet's nest. I know I done do. <laughs> Am I worried about kicking the hornet's nest? No, why? Because guess what? All that's going to do is I'm going to sit here and I'm going to spend about, let's see, what are we in? We're in an hour of a fucking stream tonight. Uh, maybe at the most. <laughs> Cal Sherpa, you ain't talking about shit. Uh, maybe at the most, I've spent a combined total of, let's just say an entire quarter of this time, 15 minutes. Mentioning the jackasses out there that wish that they could do something to stop me from being fucking happy. And guess what? When this shit's over, they're going to spend way more than that just tonight. 20 times more than that just tomorrow. And I never even mentioned their fucking name, but they'll go ahead and mention it about 40 times tomorrow. Okay. And go ahead and keep on going on and on and on and on. And uh, and hope they get some views out of it. You know what I mean? Carlos Z, where's the toilet? And shit, are we looking for that ethical place to shit again, dude? Okay, look. 
I am lucky, okay? Because an ethical place to shit is there's some construction going on two blocks down, and I've got a, 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 a whatchamacallit there. So this place don't open up until 7 a.m. So as long as I get up before 7 a.m., I can fucking, uh, you know, just walk down there, open up the shit, walk down there, scratch my nuts and shit, and fucking go take a piss. Oh, yeah, baby, the Hobo Hotel. Oh, B-Rad, did you just show up, B-Rad? Hold on. He bet he wants beer. <laughs> that's, hey, that's actually kind of funny, dude. Off the wagon, anybody wants beer? <laughs> that one got me going. B-Rad, special night tonight. I want to tell you what a special night tonight is. That is, not only are we sleeping in the new Hobo Hotel, it's not finished on the inside. You know, I still got to do my painting and trim and stuff on the inside. But guess what? For the first night in forever, I'm sleeping with no pants on, baby. Look, nah. All I got to say is, look, ma. No pants and no dollar ride home dance. Okay? This is the first night in a long-ass time. I got no pants on. In my sleeping bag. So basically, that means that we are balling. <laughs> so Amen to that, Kathy. Kathy, the only thing um, right now that I'm fucking high on is the fact that uh, I'm sleeping warm, cozy, and I don't give a fuck what anybody says tonight. So that's good. <laughs> hey, that's all I got. We don't have to worry about them. Yeah, because I can. Tell you there's an entire year of being sober that uh, if I was eight beers in tonight, I'd be one gone motherfucker, baby. That's for damn sure. Hi, I'm Popcorn and Hamburger Helper. Now, okay, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Tonight's just one of those nights where I'm high on the fact that, uh, hold on. I'll tell you what I'm high on. Let me just show you one more time. Because I'm still here and I still do what the fuck I want to do when I want to do and don't give a fuck what the fuck you try and say about it. The piece of shit made it to Alaska. I made it to Alaska. We all did it. We made it back here and we don't give a shit. Uh, I'm not convinced that, uh, nacho cheese is in, uh, captivity. I hate to say it, but, hey, like I said, uh, those guys, nacho cheese looked me straight in the eyes and was like, I want to straight, I'll stay here, you know? So, Um, no, I don't still talk to Pris. Exactly, and peeing on my phone. Yeah, you guys uh, have all seen the difference, that's for sure. Uh, no, I don't still talk to Pris. I haven't talked to Pris since uh, two days after we split up. That's all right. Um, I'm sure she's doing good. She had a good life going on. Her life's still good. Guarantee she ain't struggled as much as I have in the last couple month or so.
Check it out. You're not in the dark with me. I'm right here. Yeah, people move apart. Taco Tuesday is uh, living with Priscilla. And that was a combination. I bet Pris is probably lurking. I'd, I'd be willing to bet. Because I guarantee that uh, Ty watches. I guarantee that Ty is lurking. And uh, if Ty is lurking, he is telling Priscilla uh, anything that I'm saying and lurking. And... Um, you know, and I kind of believe that because of the fact that there was some strange leaks, like leaks, of uh, information that got out there. You know, like I said, the backcountry bunghole and shit, who doesn't know shit about our situation, doesn't even fucking know nothing, dude. All he is is just a fucking spot where Ty decided to fucking park his trailer at and call his brother because they became friends because I introduced them together. So Priscilla tells Ty something. Ty tells fucking Backcountry Bunghole something. So we're three people down now, and all of a sudden Backcountry Bunghole hates me. I could give a fuck less about what anybody's lurking about. Yeah, they got some... Their little butts got hurt and shit over there. And uh, all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, how's that going to affect me? I'm still doing what it is I need to do. And the bottom line is, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. And I don't mean this in any sort of disrespect towards her, because I like that girl. I liked her a lot. Was I knew that there was urgency for me to get here. She did not feel the urgency for me to get here for my kids. Well, guess what? I'm here now, and she's dying right now. So my urgency was correct. So no matter what the fuck that is that I had to do to break it off with her, to get here, to be around my kids, and uh, to be able to um, take care of my business. Well, apparently that's what I actually had to do. So, and I made it just in time, and I did it. And I'm here. Online shop where I sell my stuff. Amen. So far. We're talking about where to sell some stuff in a fundraiser. Let's get that part. I've got probably a month to less than a month to get into an actual legitimate place that is legally viable for the court to look at and say, yes, your kids can live there. Okay. All that is is a three bedroom house, which means first, last and whatever. We are about $1,500 Nope, sorry. We are. What is that? 1525, wait, 1523 plus seven. So we are, we are $2,200. We are $2,200 away from meeting our goal. And that's just first last deposit in a real house, three thousand dollars. Okay, not an apartment, not a uh, hotel. I'm not at a hotel. None of this. We tried that. It was too ghetto. You know, we couldn't meet both ends where I couldn't appease mom and mother in law with the, what I could afford to get and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so uh, we need three thousand dollars for first last and deposit, and that is going to be a literal. Uh, you know, I either do that right now or I have to face court issues. So did I get here late? Am I struggling with that? Yes. That's why I am asking you guys to do that. Okay. To help me out with that. So we don't have the GoFundMe set up yet because we have been struggling with just trying to get out of the sleet and get comfortable. Um, and, uh, they're requiring a few things from us on that aspect. So... Like I've tried, I mean, I've, I've started, oh, we need this, oh, we got to set up that stuff. Okay, well, it's going to take a little bit extra time. Okay, so we're doing that. 
It's going to happen. Uh, but we have links. Not in the description, but if somebody wants to add them, uh, we have PayPal. And if you don't want to just donate something outright, which I need to tell you guys that we actually have a very special donor, an anonymous donor who is willing to match dollar for dollar the donations that come in up to the point that I need for my goal. Okay. Which, like I said, I need $3,000 to get into a place. And I have a job that is waiting for me. I have a job that is prepared for me. And uh, I just need a place to live. At jobs, you know, not the best job in the world. You know, I ain't like power line work, but it could make me 15 bucks an hour. And, um, uh, you know, something close to that, I think, is going right. And um, it could keep and it can keep me inside the place. So getting in is all that we got to do. Then I can start work and I can continue to fucking pay it. Okay. This is a crucial thing because the biggest thing for me is um, that if I don't have a legit place to for them to live by the time that they leave, then you would have to... I might end up being put in a position of fighting my way back out. Battle Rog, that's a good question. We're going to finish this one first. Um, so, you know, we have a few obstacles, but we're almost there. And, uh, I got a lot of faith that we are going to make it there. So we have talked about doing a fundraiser. We have somebody that's going to match dollar for dollar. And I am not going to let you guys leave empty handed. As long as you are okay with me having your address, which will be completely uh, anonymous, then I will send you, uh, we're going to do a tiered level, like say, you know, one to a hundred dollars or one to fifty dollars is so much you know uh fifty to a hundred dollars is so much a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars is so much and then each one of those will actually have a gift that i will send to you okay if you don't mind me having your uh your address okay and i will send you something i didn't i never intended when i first came down here i knew this is what i was trying to do you guys know that okay you guys know that when I left uh, Bakersfield, that this is what I was trying to do. I stayed there and dug 12 feet into the ground. Well, Jeff, you're about to find out. I sat there and dug 12 feet into the ground for a week straight hard rock mining, or well, actually you could say soft rock mining, because uh, with whatever, uh, with a screwdriver and a pick you guys saw it. If you didn't see it, go back and watch the damn video. I made it. <clears throat> and a pick so that I could come back here with shark's teeth and not be empty handed and have something to give to you guys. Because my intention was just to try and sell what it is that I made. But now, if you guys are willing to donate, I will give you what it is that I have made. Okay? So, most likely a shark's tooth. Yes, you're right. Unless you don't want it from around here. Okay, I got fossils from around here to give away. All that kind of good stuff. Every basically, I'm gonna be putting out the labor out to go find the cool shit, find some treasure, and then give it to you guys in exchange and stuff. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can get any testimonies yet because uh, let's just say, for instance, LJ, he didn't, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, ask me for this, but LJ bought the nicest tooth that I had. He bought the nicest tooth that I had at the asking price of $150. Out of niceness for him to show him thank you, I gave him what could be considered a $100 wrap. You know, like I literally put a hardcore fucking silver plated wrap on there that took me hours and shit. And I put a fucking hardcore wrap on that. Uh, same thing with Deborah. Okay. I, 
sent her one stuff that had a hardcore wrap on it. You know, my very first one. Uh, you know, and as you can see, this is the kind of stuff we're trying to work with here, right? Uh, so I'm going to give you guys the best that I can possibly give. You're going to get more in the value. You're going to get my heart, my soul, my blood, my sweat, and my fucking tears. Okay? And I guarantee you you're going to get that. Okay? Because I have cried plenty enough over this whole gig. Uh, I sweat plenty enough fucking walking around from one place to another to fucking make this shit happen. And, uh... You know, you're going to eat my sweat for making something for you, okay? So I'm going to legitimately make something for you, and it's going to be fucking special, dude. So that's what I have to offer, you know? Aside from content. I mean, come on, guys. Some people might say, oh, I just got the content and stuff, and if you want to continue seeing the content and stuff, then you got to fucking... Guess what? I'm actually trying to give you the content for free. But, uh, I, you know, for you guys to help me out, I'm even going to give you more, dude. I'm going to give you the best that I can fucking give you. And I'm going to just keep on going with the wraps and stuff. So if you want to fucking help out, go to eBay. Uh, if somebody doesn't mind posting the eBay link, I don't know if I got one out here and stuff. But if somebody can post the eBay link, uh, it's basically uh, in Zane's Coins and Treasures on eBay. And uh, I've got a lot of shark's teeth necklaces up there. I've got a lot of stuff. And guess what? This is stuff. This isn't just something that I just bought for, you know, $9.99 for 100 of them on eBay and shit. I dug this shit out of the ground with blood, sweat, and tears on the way to go see my fucking family in fucking Texas to get there and stuff and to offer to you guys. And I'm going to put a fucking badass wrap on it. I'm going to make sure that it's cool as fuck and stuff. And I'm going to fucking get it to you guys. So, uh, okay, it's at, uh, in Z basically the eBay store is in Zane's Coins and Treasures eBay, okay? And that's pretty cool. <laughs> hey, thanks, b Ryan. I appreciate that. So, um... You know, that, that's what it boils down to. I want to be able to give you guys something. I want everybody to have something from this adventure. And it's been a long adventure. And a lot of you guys have been there for a long time. So, I, you know, I want, I, want you to, I want you to have it. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, so, hey, what can I say, man? Honestly, love you guys. And, you know, you guys are honestly I mean, you guys are honestly the reason I'm able to go to sleep with a smile on my face tonight and feeling comfortable. You know, I mean, I couldn't even have the confidence and the willpower and the desire to make something like this and get myself to where I can, for the first time in forever, have no fucking pants on in my sleeping bag and shit and be sitting here, you know, without five layers on because I'm warm as hell right now. And, uh, you know, it's been a rough struggle and, you know, if you only had to base off of the people that didn't believe in you, and I probably wouldn't even believe in myself. But, uh, you know, I'm lucky enough to have people to do. And uh, I'm lucky enough to believe in myself. And uh, so... I'm, uh, I'm feeling good with it. And, uh, you know... It's not the ideal life that I always wanted to live. But... Like I said a long time ago, when it came down to the friends of mine coming to me and go, hey, look, man, I just want you to know that my dad went through the same thing and everything, and he did this and that, and I said, what happened? Oh, he fucking lost it and became a fucking alcoholic and threw everything away, and we almost 
came, you know, and all this kind of shit. And I'm like, <laughs> that you guys are doing way better than that. Because that's all that I need to know is that we're going to get it. Um, that's rude. We're going to get rid of that. Because uh, uh, I don't care if we're broke up or not. I'm not the type of guy that uh, um, you know wants to talk too much shit about a past ex. And uh, somebody that's as special as that in my life that helped me get sober and helped me out. I ain't trying to hear the shit you're going to say about her either. Amen, LJ. Pris was a beautiful person, okay? And Pris stood by my side, and Pris helped me get sober. And, uh, you know, and I owe Pris a lot, so we're there. So, uh, you know what Bella's down to right now is that I got to piss. And uh, so uh, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to fucking open up my little door and I'm going to go outside and I'm going to go piss. Uh, <laughs> Kathy Jones, girl. Uh, yeah, respect Pris. Respect Pris. Because uh, the bottom line is, is that, uh, you know, we wouldn't have the guy that we have right now going to save his kids and being by his wife's side had it not been for, uh, you know, um, for Pris believing in me and helping me there. So, ethical urination, baby. That's right, ethical urination. So, I need a politically correct pee jar in my pad. I don't think I have one. I don't think I have any big bottles or anything. So, we'll see. But, uh, what other drink my own piss or bong water? I think my own piss, dude. Big time. Nick, come on, dude, Nick. Nick, you've always been cool. I get it, it's after hours. You might be drunk right now. We love you, Nick. But come on, dude, you guys chill on her because uh, she was good people. So, and the bottom line is all these trolls out there that think that they're fucking holier than thou and better than thou and all that kind of stuff and that you know, that I should be a better person or that they're better or whatever it is that they're thinking and shit, that uh, if you're willing to dog a person like that who was there to help me in a time of need and help get me closer to my kids, then uh, you're no better a piece of shit than the people that you're talking about. So, um, just got to say that. I know, Nick. I know it's late. I know you're probably on one and shit and all that kind of stuff. And you've always said good things before. But let's be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not here to disrespect the people that have helped me. I'm not going to disrespect the people that have helped me. I don't care if we've had a breakup. And everybody knows that breakups can be nasty. And people say things about each other. But I'm not that type of guy, man. And, uh, you know, hey, and if hey, give a thumbs up for not being that type of guy, dude. Give a thumbs up for not being that fucking type of guy, all right? Everybody give a thumbs up for not being that type of guy that's going to sit there and fucking dog on a chick that, yeah, I might have had problems with, yeah, I broke up with and shit like that, but guess what? She was there when I needed her. She was there for, you know, and I was there for her. We were all there together, and uh, she's, you know, so I got nothing but respect for her. So... We'll let that respect ride. Anybody else who wants to talk crap about her got issues of their own. Uh, 
All right, so I'll tell you what, I'm about getting ready to go pee. Let's throw in that one last plug since we're on the uh, since we're on the fun and positive vibe, baby. Is uh, we are. Hey, Kathy, don't talk no shit. Kathy says something going down. Guarantee you. Uh, just like a guy told me the other day, man. A guy told me, "Don't ever fucking doubt me once." Tell you what, that's a girl you don't want to doubt right there. Um, I don't know what to say, guys. I thank y'all a lot. We're going to get through this. And here's what I can tell you guys. I'm going to look in every single one of you guys' eyes right now. And I'm going to tell you this. There is no thank yous to give you for doing this. There is no sorries to give you for doing this. There's no nothing like that uh, to convince you guys anything other than the fact that I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make this happen with my actions. I'm going to make this happen. And I'm going to take you guys with it and you're going to see that Zane Green is going to win in this situation. Zane Green's about to get a place to live and have kids living with him. Okay? And uh, if you hate on that, then your opinion never mattered in the first place. So, we give a shit less. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. If you want to help out with this adventure, Hit the PayPal, hit my fucking eBay, go buy some shark's teeth. I'm not asking for nothing for free. You can buy all the treasures that I've gotten. It's you guys's. Love y'all. See you next time. See you, Maggie.